This video is brought to you by Patreon provider Derek. Greetings, Freeman. Today you are checking out the Delta Striker HD 1-6x24. This is a Japanese-made optic that features the DSMR reticle in mils, is illuminated, and second focal plane. What that means is as we change the magnification like you're about to see, it does not change the size of the reticle based on your magnification settings. The one thing I have to point out is just how little the scope ID you can see, and this is one of the better performing optics I've seen so far. That includes other optics such as the VX6 HD by Leupold and the Razer HD Gen 2 by Vortex. There at maximum magnification, you can see nothing really changes. Maybe a little bit of the orifice looking through it, but that's about it. Illumination on this thing is fantastic. There are 11 brightness settings and every single one of them is usable. Granted, we are on a white background with a lot of bright light around it, so you can't really make out the lower settings, but when we shut the light off, like you're about to see right here, you are gonna find out that there you are, maximum illumination. This thing is ridiculously bright and you're gonna see that throughout the rest of this video. But all 11 brightness settings are visible to the naked eye. So if you're thinking that this will get dark enough to possibly use it with night vision, you're probably wrong. It's probably gonna be a little bit too bright for that. Just something to keep in mind. And now let's check out these turrets. These turrets are basically identical to the Trijicon AccuPower 1-4, another Japanese-made LPVO. As far as how the image quality down here is, I got it as good as I could. Granted, this is a fixed parallax of about 100 yards, so it is what it is. But as you can see, the reticle seems to line up really closely to our target. So let's give this a whirl and see what we come up with. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So across four mils left and up, you can see it lines up pretty damn good. Now keep in mind, this being a capped LPVO, you're never going to need to adjust these to correct for a shot, because you have a mil reticle. So there you have it. Anyway, let's continue up with this. One, two, three, four, five, and six for a total of 10 mils of elevation gain. Looks pretty damn good to me. Uh, the reason why it looked like we were off on the windage is because I did not set the windage properly. Let's reset this to zero and see how it looks. Well, it looks to be pretty good. Uh, I did not go over the illumination, so let's go over that now. There is maximum illumination, which is just nutty. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Boom, boom, perfect. This thing so far seems like it's full of really good features. And here at 30 yards, you can again see just how little of the scope body you can see. Something that genuinely brings a warm fuzzy feeling to my heart because with less of the scope body being seen, you have a larger view through the optic and thus you can see Im your image cl more clearly. Tie that in with HD glass that like this thing has, and you're in for a real treat. There's very little distortion or warping to the cables as we pan across the horizon. However, there is just ever so slightly a bit of blurring to the edge. It's not as noticeable as some other optics, but it is there. If you take a look at the 12 o'clock position on the transformer right there, you can see it. Again, it's not terrible, but it's something that my eye picks up. As a result, when I was using this thing, it did pull me out of the overall experience of it a little bit. I really like it when the edge to edge sharpness is really, really high because I feel like I'm not being distracted. I'd actually have a little bit more magnification than a little bit of blurring to the edge. 
But pushing that caveat to the side, you can see here at 30 yards that its maximum magnification is 6x. Everything is razor sharp in the center. There is just a little bit of blurring to the edge, but overall everything looks absolutely fantastic. Pulling it back to 1x, and again the image is just big, bright, and beautiful. So nice in fact that that little caveat that I had really doesn't make that much of a difference. Pulling it back up to its maximum magnification, and you can see that there's a little bit of chromatic aberration happening on the top of that roof right there. That's partly to do, in fact, that it was a very cloudy day when I filmed this. And for some reason, during a cloudy day, it does seem to bring out more chromatic aberration. Illumination, by the way, is at maximum and is nice and sharp. It's not a big blob, and to the naked eye, it looks just as good. Fantastic. If you look closely, you can see some miraging going on at our 400 yard steel door. That is important if you're taking a shot with a smaller caliber, like a 22 LR, which would probably be about 15 mils of drop, or even a 223. Being able to call your shots with your wind is important, and this thing will easily allow you to see the mirage on a good clear day. Moving over to the right, you can make a lot of those smaller branches in that what I consider brown muddled mess, even though right now it's a green, beautiful sea of oceany green. Yeah, that makes no sense, but I'm just going to go with it. Pushing back to 800 yards on that power transformer, and everything looks as it should. You can make out all the little tiny supports, and it looks genuinely fantastic. I am sad to say, however, that I did not film this at 1,000 yards, because the week that I had this thing to film, there was unfortunately scaffolding up in the front, and I couldn't get a clear line of sight. So as a result, 800 yards is going to have to do. But with glass clarity that looks this good at that distance, you know it would have performed very well either which way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Maximum brightness. There are a lot of things that I hold in high regard or high value, I should say on one, two, whatever X LPVOs. And that is the functionality of a really true 1X. I'm very happy to report that the 1X on this thing is sensational. It's not the best I've ever gotten my hands on. Honestly, that probably goes to the Trigicon AccuPower 1 to 8 that I just recently got out. But this thing is very close into the top five, I would say. Overall, excellent performance at 1X. Pew pew, pew pew. Pew pew, pew pew. Another important attribute to me for an LPVO is illumination. I really can't stand it when manufacturers have these gigantic, super crazy dropped reticles that they illuminate the entire thing. Whenever I use one of those, it's very hard for me to pick up dead center all the time. I much prefer a very small, focused, bright dot just like this where the illumination is bright enough that it doesn't get washed out on white walls, it's nice, sharp, and clear, and very usable. I guess it's out of service. Tie both of those attributes together with a forgiving 1x eye box, and you have yourself something that's going to be functional, as close to a red dot or a reflex sight as you could possibly get, while still having the benefits of a magnified optic all-in-one. Pew pew! Pew pew! Pew pew! Pew pew! I will of course be showcasing the eye box in depth shortly, but until that time, let me start talking about this reticle. Reticles are very personalized, and I know that everyone likes uh, their reticles a certain way. I don't know if I necessarily agree with this reticle style for an LPVO like this. Pew pew! Pew! I kind of wish that at least the full markers for each one mil would be a little bit bigger, so it's a little bit easier for you to pick up. But for me, it just seems like it's a little bit too finite and a little bit too difficult to be able to 
very quickly and positively ensure that you're at a certain drop for a certain distance requirement. Pew! Hostage has been rescued. I can see the appeal for many people having, let's say, oddball calibers that there aren't many BDC reticles out there for them, like 300 Blackout, 7.62x39, and the like, but I just think it could be dealt with a little bit better. Moving on, and we are at the 50 yard range, though it is not the range that I typically film at. I was actually invited to the range at this particular day, and uh, I got the chance to enjoy a little bit different scenery. With the illumination at full and the magnification on maximum, you can see that the image quality on this thing is stellar in very bright sunny days. Color representation is basically perfect. Everything is as sharp as you could expect at the center, and the edges in bright sunny environments seem to be a little bit more sharp than what they were. Overall, the image on this thing is sensational, and the colors and the images really start to pop out at you under bright circumstances. Earlier, when we were in slight overcast at 30 yards to 400 yards, it didn't seem as good, but here it looks absolutely fantastic. I take my M1 carbine at those steel plates to the left, and you can see the splash banging off the plates. You can see all the dimples on all those steel plates at 50 yards, 6x, and it's genuinely just awesome. Moving on to paper at 50 yards, you can just make out those 30 caliber holes in the top right and the 22 caliber holes on the left, bringing it back to about a 15 yard target. 6x is obviously a little bit too much there. I back it down to, I believe, around 3x, and the image quality is good enough that you can spot your shots. Bringing it back to 50 yards, and we're going to take a look at the infamous iBox test. The only place to start with an iBox test is 1x, and I am very happy to report that this thing is ridiculously forgiven when you go farther away from it. So if you find yourself in a really awkward position, if you pull your eye back as far as three to four inches farther back, you can still see through it with relative ease. The illumination is also still visible while you're off into the shadows and makes it that much easier to use with both eyes open in awkward positions. It is stellar. 3x we see a little bit of the same performance it is very forgiving when you get farther away from it however when you get a little bit closer to it it does get a little bit challenging and when you do step off to the sides without pulling back first it is a little bit hard to look through it it does start to shadow out a little bit quicker than i would like but it's still very forgiving compared to a lot of other optics 6x, 6x is pretty much on par with a lot of L other LPVOs, with the exception that when you pull back again, you can still see through it fairly well. A lot of LPVOs, whether you get closer, farther away, or off to either side, you can't see through at all. This thing is pretty good, at least when you get a little bit farther back from where you should be. And honestly, that's better than most. On this particular day at the large bore range, I was not able to shoot, nor was anybody else, so I enjoyed a nice calm day all to myself. You will note that the decking for the 100 yard paper targets is lined up from the inside of the scope to the outside of the scope. I usually talk about that as 50 yard line, but I didn't really get the chance to do my normal video. Illumination is on full yet again, and on a very bright sunny day, it is very clearly visible. Paper targets right there, you can see that it's peppered with a lot of shot, and the 200 yard steel in the berm behind it is looking quite good. Lower quality glass might not be able to show the steel as well as this thing does on the berm, nor with those splintered woods and those bowling pins sprinkled throughout the berm and the grass above it. The HD glass really does bring a lot more resolution to the table, and as a result, you can pick up those finer details a lot easier. You can still again see the mirage in the air to be able to call your wind. We pan across the 200 yard berm to the 200 yard paper targets where you can very easily distinguish the white rings in the black and the black rings in the white. The numbers are a little bit hard to see inside the rings themselves, but on the paper targets and the backers, they're as clear as anything else. The grass behind it looks absolutely fantastic and you can only see a little bit of that blurring that I was talking about at the six o'clock edge. Overall, not enough to say that this looks bad by any stretch of the imagination. We pan across the 200 yard paper targets to this nice little steel setup that they've just recently implemented. I don't have the exact size of those steel plates, but you can roughly guess this is about 220 yards 
and the smaller ones are about half a mil high and wide. So you know what I want you to do below what size those are because I'm curious to see what you come up with versus what I came up with. Nevertheless, those targets look absolutely fantastic and razor sharp. And with this thing on a 223, it's very easy to make hits on those things all day long. We move back to the 300 yard paper targets and it's a little bit difficult to see exactly what's going on there, but if you're holding just dead center of the paper, it's very easily done with this scope and this reticle combination. Again, I don't know if this reticle is ideal for an LPVO like this, but I'm not gonna argue if someone wants to say that they prefer this over a standard, let's say, 223 drop reticle like on the P4XI, the 3PTR reticle. Because again, unlike the 3PTR reticle, this thing will at least give you the drops in half mil increments that you can really fine tune it for your load, your rifle, your elevation, basically the list goes on and on. I just wish that it was a little bit more delineation, like I said earlier, between the full mils or even half mils to give you a little bit better sense of what you might be holding at. As far as what we're looking at though, those steel targets at around 340 yards are very easily visible, as is the Mirage. So for taking a shot at this distance, if you had to call out your wind and be able to hold for it, you'd be easily able to do so. The glass on this thing is true HD in my opinion. It brings a lot of resolution, a lot of colors, a lot of character to the image itself, and it really makes using this thing a joy. Like I said, it's so good that it overpowers that little caveat that I have with the blurring to the edge. If you listen closely to the beginning of the scene, you can hear the clicks on the illumination ring. Illumination is stellar in every single regard. The detents are basically perfect. The knob feels great. It's easy to get your purchase on it. And then just the brightness of, of the thing is just phenomenal. There's nothing about this illumination that I don't think is perfect, but for you, if you're running night vision, again, it's probably gonna to be too bright even at its lowest setting. But as you've seen in this review, it handles the low light perfectly fine, and it handles broad daylight extremely well. You can use this genuinely as a red dot and never even have to think about it. It's just seamless in that regard. Pew, pew. Pew 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 Pew, pew, pew. As you might be able to guess, there aren't many negatives to this thing. It's really that good. For its price tag of around 800 bucks, I think it slots beautifully in the market. But I'm done talking for now. Enjoy the rest of this ambiance before we get into my final thoughts.
So the Delta Striker HD 1 to 6. What do I really think about this? This is a phenomenal scope. It ticks all the boxes I'm really looking for with one, but that's just my personal preference, and that's the reticle option. I think this would be much better with a simple BDC style reticle, something that you could very easily engage with and just have a ballpark of where you gotta aim. I really think the reticle on this would be more suited for the AccuPower 1 to 8 that I reviewed with target turrets, but even then, a 6X is just a little bit limiting on that. So if this had a little bit different reticle, it would be perfect for me. Now, as a comparison to what I feel this is the direct competitor for, there's actually two scopes. The first, I'm going to say, is the PST Gen 2 1 to 6, because this is very similar as far as specs goes to the PST. And then what else? The Razer HD Gen 2. Again, because it's actually very similar to the specs. And for the price, around $800 for this, it slots itself mostly in between those two. The PST could be had for around $600 brand new right now, as well as the Razer HD for around $1350 or so on Amazon. This thing is $800. So it's definitely leaning more towards the PST price-wise, but I feel this thing is more performance-oriented towards the Razer HD as a competitor. Now, one aspect that Stryker has over both of the Vortexes is weight. This thing is 18 ounces. The PST is like 22 and a half, and the Razer HD 1 to 6 E is like 21 and a half. So this is basically four ounces lighter than a PST, and nearly the same for the Razer HD. That's a lot of weight savings. And it's not just the weight. You're getting glass that, in my opinion, in what I've seen, is more comparable to the Razer HD as opposed to the PST. So even though this slots the price closer to the PST, I feel it punches more towards the Razer. And with that basis alone, that makes this a bargain. Not only is it lighter, but it also comes with this nice little cattail, which is perfect for using in any sort of situation. You might have seen it towards the end. Granted, I'm holding a tripod head, not a rifle, but it's easy enough to throw this with your thumb to get it to a little bit of higher magnification if you need it in a pinch. Not only that, but the controls on this make it so easy to do that because everything on this thing is phenomenal. This is almost becoming a benchmark for me as far as what an LPVO should be. Do I think it's worth its price? If you're willing to spend $800 on an LPVO, you should absolutely consider this. And if the reticle is to your liking. Now, let's say you only have a budget for around 600 Is it worth going the extra 200 from the PST to this? It's a little bit here nor there. That's something you have to decide. Me personally, would I make the jump up? I would, for everything except for the reticle. Would I, could I learn to love this reticle and use it properly? Of course, anyone can with enough training and time. But right off the bat, I prefer the reticles on both the PST and the Razer HD. But again, this is just a very quick comparison on that. Long story short, this thing is absolutely fantastic and worth the money, no matter how you look at it. Is it worth it for you to bump up to this price point over, I don't know, a three or $400 optic? Probably not, because you're doubling the cost of an optic such as the Burr's RT6, which you can get for around 350 bucks with a pepper mound. That's a great bargain. And everyone that I've recommended that scope to has absolutely fallen in love with it because it does everything very well, if not even a little great. But this thing is basically great through and through. And you have to be able to decide whether you are willing to pay the price for it or not. For me, this thing is absolutely worth its price, hands down. And something that totally took me by surprise, and I'm very glad that it did. Derek, thank you so much for sending this in for review. I know I've had this for a very long time, and I sincerely apologize. I have a lot of stuff I'm trying to chug through, but I'm so glad that you gave this to me for review because I am blown away by how good this thing performs. If I could find one of these at a good price, I would probably buy it just to have it. So with that, Derek, thank you very much for sending this in, and thank you all very much for watching. See you again next time. And a very huge thank you to all of my Patreon providers. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to help support the channel but don't want to join my Patreon, I completely understand. But you can still help support by using my affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for watching.